Welcome to the Breaking Bitcoin Market Update. It's Thursday, October 14th already, 2021. Yeah, almost the middle of the month. Can't believe how fast October's flying by. Almost as fast as the prices are rising. Hell of a day in the markets. Uh, pretty damn green on the alt front. Ethereum, Ethereum finally going for it. Seems to be in striking distance of new all-time highs now with the latest pump on Ethereum cresting over 3,700 today. Bitcoin, I think, also took a shot at fresh highs. It did tap as high. Well, I mean, not fresh all-time highs, but fresh local highs. We did swing up as high as 58.5-ish today, guys. We've since uh, got sold into, but Ethereum Ethereum emits the Bitcoin sell off. Ethereum's going for a nice little run today. Tapping 3,800 actually earlier today. Looking pretty good out here. Traditional's uh, bouncing as well. Dixie doing things. All market moves we look forward to updating you on. We got one of our lead analysts right here on the line on standby. Caribbean time or not. Nothing waits for for these markets. Certainly not our analyst. Alex, what's going on? What's happening? Well, what's, what's internet's much better today, guys. Excellent. Very happy to hear that. Jason, of course, ain't with us today. Jason's on the road. He might be listening in right now, though. So big shout out to Jason, the big man behind the wheel, heading to wherever he's going. I think he said Montana. Maybe I just doxed Jason's whereabouts. I believe the feds will be coming after you any minute now. You've been warned. Um, I play, of course. Let's get into it, guys. You know how the next hour or so is going to unfold. We do have a, uh, well... Exciting 60 to 90 minutes in store for you. Have a few uh, news items to cover today. We're going to cover a few news items. Checking on the Evergrande 
crisis over there in China. We're going to, of course, get into a look at the bubbles. We'll shout out the audience. We're going to get into the main TA. I know you guys are interested in hearing Alex's thoughts on the latest moves, some reversals in the markets today. Going to hear the latest uh, insights from lead analyst Alex in, uh, let's say, about 40 minutes. Yes, 40 minutes. We can have him on the air. But in the meantime, well, maybe so sooner than that. In the meantime, let's go ahead and get into it, guys. We got a few news items I want to cover today. Hopefully, audio levels are good. You know, I'm coming in a hair low, so I'm just going to up myself a bit. That looks good. And Alex, I'm going to up Alex a touch as well today. All right, brilliant. This should do. And Alex is going to get his volume raised from 90 to 100. All right, looks good. Guys, thanks for everybody uh, hanging in there. We're going to get into the first news item. It comes by way of uh, ZY Crypto. Actually, no, I'm going to move this one up. We're going to talk about Charles Hoskinson later. And we're also going to talk about the Chinese crackdown on crypto later. And yeah, maybe we'll start with this piece from Bloomberg. A little update on Chinese developer shares falling in the debt crisis. A little Evergrande update in China. Chinese developers fell in Shanghai stock trading as the embattled industry was hit yet by more downgrades. And I am curious. Oh, paywall? Hell no. Uh, SMP cuts Greenland holding. Fitch downgrades Modern Land. So several, I guess, of the major developers in China all getting downgrades. Cascading default looming. Of course, Evergrande to sell $11 million stake in its furnishing company. Seems like a pittance. $11 million stake. Uh, I think they had they owe something to the tune of 30 or even 300 billion dollars. Um, pretty insane. Um, looking forward to this default coming later this month. Apparently, companies in advance are already getting downgraded over there. All right, I would read more. Maybe I'll grab another link in a minute. But unfortunately, the paywall is totally blocking me right now. Bloomberg, thank you. Um, Let's get into another piece here. This one comes from Cointelegraph. Dogecoin loses 70% against Bitcoin during the six months of the celebrity Doge endorsements. Yeah, uh, something to think about, indeed. Now that Bitcoin's kind of uh, kind of nearing all-time highs again, we're back almost in the 60s, uh, we look back to the, the year that was and what a year it was for Doge. But... Has it retraced? Uh, has it, well, you know, if we look at Doge BTC chart, for instance, uh, how has it not fared amidst all of this? Has Sheeb stolen the thunder? I'm not going to, you know, indulge this article too much because uh, I don't care too much for Doge. We know more even following the price action. But still, I kind of look back here on this uh, middle of October Thursday um, at, the, at the year that was indeed and how Doge has uh, been indeed embattled and how Bitcoin. Bitcoin has returned, and yet the Doge fortune, not so much. All right, enough of that headline. I got another piece here from Cointelegraph titled, uh, CME Bitcoin Futures Open Interest Hits Eight-Month Highs, and it's greater than when Bitcoin's price was tested at 65 k Very interesting. Open interest has surged to a little over $3 billion on Thursday to levels not seen since February. Open interest for Bitcoin futures on the Chicago Mercantile Exchange. The CME inched a new record highs Thursday as BTC reclaimed its five-month high of $58,000 on Bitstamp. The total number of outstanding derivative contracts in CME Group's Bitcoin futures market reached $3.22 billion, according to data provided by BYBT, just $40 million below the record high logged in February 2021. All right, so we're just a hair away, stone's throw away from new all-time highs in the CME in terms of open interest. Nonetheless, the open interest came out to be higher than it was at Bitcoin's price peak in mid-April. Okay, so we are uh, higher than price peak uh, volumes or uh, open interest, but just short of all time. Why do I feel this next huge bullish impulse coming? Or is this uh, is this just one big fake? All right, let's not let's not indulge any more the metrics here, guys. We have our own team of crack analysts who, of course, provide you all the technical analysis necessary, at least enough that I won't bore you with the details of uh, this article any further. Let's have a look. Here's a piece from the Black Crypto titled "Putin Suggests Openness to Moving Energy Trades to Crypto from Dollar in the Future." All right. 
In an interview with CNBC this morning, Russian President Vladimir Putin seemed open to a future role for crypto as a unit of account in the energy trading industry. Since the imposition of U.S. sanctions following the 2014 annexation of Crimea, Russia has been trying to reduce its dependence on the U.S. dollar. There's a long been talk of crypto in this market, but Putin's comments today are rare, if tentative, indication of interest from the country's leader. Very, very interesting. Um... Yes, this is one way to bypass sanctions. And then with an energy crisis, so to speak, right now in Europe, right? With supposedly, uh, what's what's the problem with all this energy flowing? Like maybe not so much a consequence of sanctions and monetary policy or anything like that. But um, nonetheless, uh, interesting hint at uh, how well, what a borderless society the future might look like, like it or not. Maybe, maybe this will bring more goods to the market when they're desperately needed. I don't know. Alex, any thoughts on, on Putin and uh, bypassing U.S. hegemony in uh, in the financial network of the world, huh? Um, no, I, I don't have much thought about it. I don't see how it makes much of a difference to us uh, here. Um, you know, you know, again with uh, Russia. Back the markets. I mean, we're we're trading and stuff. I just I don't see this uh, changing much here. No worries, Mull. Fair enough. Uh, specifically regarding crypto and the oil trade, Putin reiterated, it seems to me it's still a little early to talk about it. Cryptocurrency, of course, can be used in an account, but it's not stable to transfer money from one place to another, even trade. Moreover, trade energy resources, in my opinion, is still a little premature. Ah, a little premature, but... I mean, he said it's a nothing burger statement. He said, it yeah, is indeed. it's cool and all, but it's early and stuff. I mean, it's, 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 it's a nothing statement. Indeed, indeed. Not much there to add, so let's go ahead and continue. Art House Sotheby's launches curated NFT platform called Sotheby's Meta- Metaverse. The art auction house Sotheby's has launched its own non-fungible token platform called Sotheby's Meta- Metaverse. Jeez, the platform will include curated NFTs from the Sotheby's team and allow individuals to purchase NFTs using Ethereum, Bitcoin, USDC, or fiat currencies. Ah, fiat, very good. Future features will include dynamic auctions and the ability to mint generative artworks, according to the auction house. All right, well, just a uh, another... Um, uh, portal, another uh, marketplace in which to, well, spill more and more NFTs onto a uh, new NFT platform powered by Mojito, a startup that builds NFT platforms and ensures compliance. Ah, I see. So they're also looking after payment processing. Well, I like this last part, fiat currencies. Uh, any platforms that uh, let people check out, you know, using their, their Visa or their traditional payment cards uh, is, I think, very helpful, right? Because, you know, it's one thing to... To be selling crypto and uh, getting in on the ICOs and all that on chain. Uh, it's another with NFTs, obviously, which are reaching kind of a ma- wider appeal. It'd be nice if uh, we'd see something like, um, yeah, Visa. Visa or Fiat gateways directly on a platform like OpenSea. Uh, let's see here. This reads more like a press release, so I'm not going to continue further, but still very interesting to see how many um, big names are now throwing down on uh, on the NFT. There's so much money, I guess, to be made in fees. There's such a fervor uh, that you're seeing the likes of it. Just, we just talked about Coinbase. Coinbase following the lead of Binance and FTX. So many more now on the way, including famous auction house so let's continue to another piece here from zy crypto cardano's charles hoskinson blasts the imf for an anti-crypto comments all right let's read the summary here very briefly guys imf warns that emerging economies are likely to face fa- uh, financial stability risks by adopting cryptocurrencies and stable coins and of course charles hoskinson founder of cardano replies that cryptocurrencies were rather the solution uh the to hyperinflation crypto is still likely to face more oversight from crypto regulators in the future, emerging economies have been warned by the IMF that adoption of such radical new technology could cause, pose serious risks. They call it cryptoiz- cryptoization. Yeah, cryptoization. The cryptoization of local economies. According to IMF, cryptoization could potentially undermine financial stability and so on and so forth. Uh, adoption, blah, 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 blah. Let's see here. What does Charles Hoskinson have to say? Any kind of uh, great insight here? No. Nope. Again, another article really reaching today. Uh, let's see here. Anything at all that can be gleamed 
responded to remarks made in the report, took a poke IMF's motive for the warning. He said IMF was only concerned that they could lose control of global finance if the centralization goes mainstream, adding that cryptocurrencies, contrary to the IMF's warning, would save emerging economies from hyperinflation. And by collapse, he says, we mean they won't be laden with hyperinflation and highly centralized rails that are under our control. All right, well, based comments from Hoskinson. But, uh, yes, I think this is something we all know. All right, um, enough of that piece. Let's go ahead and get to Bitcoinist. Uh, with a piece titled Visas, Building an NFT Program to Support Digital Creators. Once again, this is turning into like cracking NFT currency.com but uh visa is launching a program to support artists who want to use non-fungible tokens to sell their work according to an announcement on visa's official website the financial services giant partnering with former mlb player turned nft artist mika mika johnson to help make yeah mika i'm horrible at pronouncing this name but anyway help creators understand nfts and how to harness public yeah but this one's like this one's Micah. Gotcha. So this is Micah Johnson to help creators understand NFTs and also how to harness public blockchains for producing and selling digital goods. What a future we're heading into, guys. The world is uh, it's going to be an interesting one. One where many people now uh, apply their, their talents, their, their energy, their work into producing digital goods of the future. Not so much physical goods. Those aren't getting delivered as much, uh, apparently, anymore. Supply chains are breaking. But one thing's for sure. These uh, digital goods will easily be ushered to you for, well, I guess, whatever credits you may have left in your wallet. Um, let me have a look here. Visa's first... not It's obviously not their first venture. They acquired a CryptoPunk recently. We covered that. It's, I guess, the new corporate trend, which I'm honestly looking forward to. Um, you know, it's like... Um, Clearly, there was a huge hurdle. There was, there was a huge, um, um, I don't know how to describe it, but like there's a big uh, hurdle to see corporates uh, add um, assets like Bitcoin to their coffers. You know, you kind of, you kind of, you just don't partake of that. I guess it's, it's, it's seen undignified for many corporates to, to, to do the, the that's, that's more of an Elon move, right? Um, but something like uh, NFTs is totally different. You can be hip, you can be cool as a corporate, you can still get in with the new tech, right? And not look like uh, the black sheep of the corporate world by adopting crypto to your balance sheet. You know what I'm saying, Alex? It's like buying corporate. Precisely, it's brilliant. Um, so that's why I look forward to when I hear you know stories like this, uh, these uh, supporting artists and so on and so forth. It's I think pretty good. I think it's bullish for the space at large. Especially now that this is increasingly more becoming NFT focused. Um, let's have a look. Maybe I'll skip this piece because we are going NFT crazy as, as of lately. A Mexican president ruling out adoption of Bitcoin as legal tender. At least in this case, Mexican president Andres Manuel Lopez has decisively rejected the idea of adopting Bitcoin as legal tender. All right, so it's not going to happen in Mexico, at least not yet. Post crackdown, China's $28 billion crypto outflow to foreign countries drops by 40%. The data shows that the amount of unregulated fund outflow has dropped by about 40% in China after the recent round of tightening crypto regulations. The development could drive China to adopt even stricter rules for the industry. Crypto enthusiasts are not buying China's reasons for the crackdown on the industry. Uh, yeah, it goes to show you... Um, <clears throat> China's a huge economy. It's super thriving. As a, a Canadian, I can tell you, we've certainly witnessed how much wealth has flown out of China and kind of flown into, you know, well, um, into other, other economies internationally, right? They love getting their money out of the country. They do that through investments, particularly property. I've seen it firsthand where I am, and it's really levied um, the... Uh, real estate market in places like where I am, like I keep saying, and uh, it really goes to show you like how big, how big f outflows are of the country, like how much capital really tries to escape, and how much, how much of it tapped, you know, crypto rails, so to speak, in order to do it. How much money flowed out, and uh, you know, it's down by apparently 40 percent. Um, and you know, it is a what 28 billion dollar industry is that a year, probably a year, maybe annu annually. Yes, total flowed. Yes, it's annual. So thirty billion a year, not insignificant. Still, only forty percent. Does that mean there's still, uh, you know, fifteen billion 
10 billion or so still leaving the country through you know known crypto rails goes to show you that indeed there could be more crackdowns to come i mean if their objective is to really clamp down on this sort of thing it sounds seems like there's still billions left on the table for them to try to scurry right so um could be just goes to show you the impact is real Times are changing. Blockworks. And this is one of the last stories for today, guys. We are going to get into the next segment very, very shortly. Only have a piece or two left. One from Blockworks titled Sacramento Kings NBA Franchise Partners with Anchor. Collaboration marks the latest in a string of blockchain-related initiatives for tech-focused basketball teams. Yes, and in this case, uh, it is indeed the Sacramento Kings have launched, uh, let's see here, team collaboration with a decentralized infrastructure provide, uh, provider, Anchor, will include education initiatives around advancements in the crypto space, our little education program they're doing, and they launched something called Mining for Good program in 19 to help offer scholarships to Sacramento-based causes. All right, well, they're hooking up with Anchor, which is uh, not an oft-talked-about, but a very well-established uh, project in this space. So let's continue. Morgan Stanley, this is the last piece for today, guys. Thank you. I'm going to thank you for bearing with me as we breeze through about a dozen headlines today, one titled... Uh, Morgan Stanley CEO and how crypto just won't go away let me see here CEO James Gorman sounded upbeat about cryptocurrencies during the bank's third quarter earnings call claiming that the industry just will not go away I don't think crypto is a fad I don't think it's going to go away he says Morgan Stanley was the first major US bank to grant its wealthy clients access to Bitcoin funds in March so far Gorman does not see a lot of client demand for Bitcoin but he does not rule out that crypto may start playing a bigger role in the business for us, honestly, he says, it's not just a huge part of the business demand for our clients. That may evolve and we will evolve with it, but certainly it's not what's driving our economics one way or another. All right, this is another nothing statement. Uh, blah, blah, blah. Their shares are up for uh, da, 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 da. Not siding with Diamond. I don't know the value of Bitcoin, he says, should or shouldn't be, but these things are certainly not going away. Yeah, definitely, right? Yeah, so nobody can say the value of Bitcoin. Well, I can kind of tell you where it is right now uh, in terms of spot price but uh, and I can tell you another thing I don't think it's going away um, do do what you will but these chains will continue to be mined down all right let's let's continue guys that's it for the news today I think I've bored you boys enough ladies as well with enough pieces here yeah I think I've hit them all uh, let's see here Social media analysis shows NFTs hype mirrors sales trends. An analysis of 31,000 NFT related posts of subreddits and 3,000 headlines for mentions of NFTs shows mostly positive sentiment. So, yes, they go into they analyze many projects and go figure. Um, online sentiment, aka online shilling, online buzz, um, almost directly related to price. So, you want your project to pump, apparently, you gotta, you gotta be buzzing. It's all about social media and social networking and social shilling. All right. This time I mean it for real, right? We're done. We're getting out of the news. Let's go into the bubbles. What's going on in the alt space today? Sure looking mighty green out here. A couple of decent gainers. Axie AXS leading today's gains with a 16% green bubble. Uh, who else we got? Link. Link is back. Back with 12.7% day to the upside. Looking mighty bullish already, doesn't it? And we got a smattering of other single-digit gainers. Kusama, Near, Tell, Dot, Rune, ETH. Everybody's up about 8% today, guys. Thereabouts. It's a decent day. Um, ETH in the last 48 hours, I think, is up a little over 10%. So ETH really, really taken off, it feels like. With, like I said earlier, it just seems like striking distance to new all-time highs. And heck, with all of this, uh, I mean, whether or not you partake of the NFTs, one kind of still seems bullish for ETH, ETH holders, uh, given how much excitement, how much demand, I think, uh, comes into ETH when, when people got to start uh, backing up the truck and loading up their NFT bags. Increasingly more and more normies, no less. All right. There is your look at bubble shoutouts to everybody holding a bit of the green today. Let's go ahead and continue. We have a look at uh, the audience today. What's our lovely um, cracking crypto audience up to this Thursday afternoon? We have Profit Bear first in the chat this afternoon. Big shout outs to Profit Bear. 
going on my dear prophet bear all right we're good uh what's up cc family yes well what's up to you my man uh b flow what's up big shout outs to b flow sub b indeed uh franklin mc good morning ladies and gents yes good morning to all joining us live today any word very good morning to any word uh isaiah big shout outs to uh, Isaiah Camon, yes, good morning to you too. B Flow, sup, big sup to B Flow. Uh, Simpson YouTube, Simpson YouTube YT over on D Live. Hello, hello, well, big hello to you. B Flow, can we take a look at S S Fund USDT continuation long? Yeah, hang tight. I will add that to the request line. We certainly will give it a look. Uh, ACU5, sup guys, thank you for the stream, well it's a pleasure, thank you for joining us on the stream, Adam, hey boys, big cup and handle for Bitcoin and Ethereum above the daily, 3 day, weekly baselines with signals that test 75-85% to 85 in my backtesting, Adam says, it's time to long this ish, you know what I'm saying, oh man, uh, I'm feeling your bullishness here, we will, I will, I will reserve further judgments though until I hear Alex's analysis coming your way in about two minutes, uh, David Rice on Twitch, oh yeah, it's that time again, indeed it is, uh, Adam, honestly not sure what the bear sentiment is justifiable with technicals and systems trading, well, you know, if you've been watching the show the last couple of days, Adam, uh, our, tra our analysts have kind of moved with the moved with the markets um but again call me call me when we get above um all-time highs all right so i'm not i'm not a believer quite yet as much as bull as bullish as i want to be uh shout out to david rice it's a great day learn earn and just get a little burned <laughs> oh just a little burn i see what you did there david rice the uh the eternal the eternal toker uh Kavano trades big shout outs to you on youtube howdy folks did you just say crack analysts? Yeah, we are a crack team of analysts, you know? Not not the crack smoking type, hell no, but, you know, just... I mean, it's probably a cracking trip engine. Yes, it's a sharp, sharp as a whip, right? Um, something like that. Um, oh, Midwest, howdy folks, live from South Dakota. Big shout outs to Jason. Chiming in live in the live chat uh, while on the road to South Dakota. Polly B, hey people, big shouts to, uh, to Polly B. Jag077, hello everyone, big shouts to Jag. Uh, Isaiah I mentioned, Crypto Cats, hey what's up everyone? Crypto Cats, market playing out damn near my projections earlier this week, says Jason. Uh, Polly B, IMF is running scared, IMF is about control, says Franklin MC. Wayne A, can you look at BAT and XMR? I will add that to the request line, stand tight. Credio Media, Credio. Credo Media. Uh huh. Alexander the Great. It went to Doge and then Baby Doge. Will it go from Shiba Inu and then Baby Shiba Inu? I mean, I'm going to presume that Baby Shiba Inu probably already exists, right? Please tell me it doesn't exist. Even my categories. Uh, Robert Warner, I just got here. Did you talk about the two companies getting tickers for ETFs? Um, US ETFs? Um, no, maybe, I don't think I did, but maybe I'll quickly check that out and report back with my findings. Uh, but shout outs to Mr. Ether. This also reminds me, Jag, Jag077, um, are you in the Discord server? You gotta hit us up, man. Uh, Mr. Ether is trying to get you your prize. I think he's trying to get a hold of you. Uh, and you can't be reached because we can't find you in the server. Maybe you are in the server, we're just not sure of your name. Do us a big favor, hit us up in the server, uh, go into the general chat, and <clears throat> just leave a message. Be like, yo, Mr. Ether, hit him up, tag him. He will get in touch with you. He wants to get you your prize. So shout out to Mr. Ether for that one. Let's continue. We're going to shout out a couple more people. We're going to get into the TA. I'm almost at the bottom here. Adam, can you guys take a look at Step Perp? I'm long on it. All right, hang tight. We'll get to Step. Crypto Fear Greed Index is still 70 out of 100. Yeah, still mad, mad greedy. David Rice cutting down my girls today. Going to smoke real fine. Well, if you're cutting them down today, my man, that you st you're still weeks away from enjoying that cured bud, but um, I wish you the best of luck in your harvest. Uh, Jason, blows my mind, we can't get more viewers. Well, you know, we, we down here in the trenches, we doing our thing. The few and very lovely and tuned in of our audience are, you know, they're getting it, they're getting the, the deal, they're getting the underground info. This is not what everybody else gets, and I appreciate everybody who does tune in. Maybe this is our own little inside thing. Not everybody gets to see see behind what's behind the, the mirror, right? Um, let me see here. I'm having trouble trying to find you guys on Discord. He's uh, Mr. Ether. 
Jag. If you search at Mr. Ether in the server, he comes up. He's at Mr. Ether Robert Warner in the server. Number 10, like smashed, blockchain gains. Well, guys, do as blockchain gains does when he enters the room and hit the like button. Shout out to blockchain gains. Always counting on to smash the like button. Hit that like button, guys. Hit it, hit it, hit it. Um, Jag077, I have Discord. Evidently, I'm not in your Discord. Well, that's a disappointment. You've been in our community, at least in the live chat for a while, but you're not in the Discord? Get in the Discord, guy. Discord.crackingcryptocurrency.com whoops sorry about that and finally blockchain gains with a request i see your request i will proceed to adding it to the request line in just a moment because we're heading into the next segment guys ta is coming your way right now alex if you could be so kind fire the laser share your stream and we're gonna get into it and do it up you can do it up in style today guys Oh. We don't have to do bonds. Brilliant. Brilliant. Alright, switching over to his scene right now, guys. Indeed, today we will... Uh, uh, we're not going to hold anything back. We are going to increase the quality of the stream. No, none of that Jason's compact chart. Uh, you're getting the Alex view of trading view today, which I must say is uh mostly organized all things considered in charting in this charting business all right uh just bear with me alex i have to reorganize the screen real quick for it to be suitable because i had it set up for uh jason's layout yesterday but i think i have it pretty much ready to go now all right perfect bitcoin usd on the chart and i'm going to hop into the live chat and start uh extracting everyone's request everyone enjoy the ta So uh, we've moved back up and pegged the uh, point of control near our highs here. Still experiencing some resistance along our uh, our pitchfork dynamic lines of support and resistance. Looking at various other charts, this is kind of an area of resistance that we've been eyeing for a while. I don't feel particularly... feel especially bullish in this spot. I think we're more likely to pull back here on Bitcoin. This is an area of resistance that we've rejected from a few times in the past. Yeah, at this time, if we can get above 60k, I'd be willing to long again. You know, there was there was a nice continuation long from down at what Got a continuation long here that we probably hit take profit one on, but there's there's not much I want to do with Bitcoin in this spot. I'm not willing to take profit yet, and I'm not willing to long again. We'll say that on lower time frames we do appear to have broken the uptrend. Do this as a linear trend. You see, on the 12 hour, we got a little bit of a blow off top here, starting to get signs of reversal right at resistance. Here's that local point of control again. See, we're right up against it. As far as Ethereum, Ethereum is surprisingly stronger here. How do I really feel about Ethereum spot? We're about to get a nice continuation signal here on uh, on Ethereum, on the weekly at least. 
That's kind of interesting. We could maybe view this as a, as a retest of the weekly baseline. Uh, WADA is starting to fire off. Time transformation is starting to curl back up here. It's interesting looking. I don't, I don't want to be a buyer until we close above basically 39.50 on the weekly. So we got resistance here, got resistance in the same spot here. So for right now, rather than longing in this spot, I'd rather long above 39.50, above 4,000, and then just you know really, just really hammer into the Ethereum long if that happens. I would just, I'm just a little wary uh, as we just, we seem to be dumping more volume up in this area. We can still turn around over the next week or so. So I'm just, I'm not quite convinced. You see this, the volume we're hanging out inside of right now. It doesn't look that bad on the weekly, though. Mm. Ethereum Bitcoin doesn't look great, though. I mean, yeah, we're, we've recovered a little bit over the last day or so. A little bit of recovery, but we have a lot of resistance overhead. Look at the monthly here. Where are we at on the monthly? Like halfway through this month. As things stand, we're still likely to, to turn over on Ethereum Bitcoin at the end of this month. We crossed under here. We're likely to get a much larger pullback on Ethereum versus Bitcoin. I think this is the likely scenario. Uh, so... I would still be looking for Bitcoin to outperform Ethereum. Bitcoin on the monthly does not look so bad. We're about to get a, um, a bounce from zero here on uh, Bitcoin monthly time transformation. Kind of looks not so bad. Hmm. This is another example of how I would rather wait until we close a new high to, to, to long in this spot rather than be long right at resistance. It's the rest of crypto deal. A little bit of a pullback here on Bitcoin dominance. This is not surprising. We've had a big day on Ethereum, a big day on lots of alts. Bitcoin just tried the trading sideways. But we do have a break of the long-term downtrend, which you can see. Right here, there's our downtrend. Boom, we break it last week. Yeah, kind of trading sideways this week. It's cool. I, I think Bitcoin will likely cont continue to appreciate against the alts in this spot. I don't see any change in that. Uniswap perp starting to look kind of nice here. Boom, boom, boom. Higher lows. Holding our previous resistance as support. Dragon perp. Eh. This is a continuation signal. We we had this uh, we had this continuation signal yesterday. A little bit of follow through today. not super fond of our current position. I think I'd rather see a new high.
we haven't even broken this downtrend yet on DeFi perp. And I would suggest that, unlike a lot of other uh, alt pairs, we're actually not at an area of support. We're just at an area of resistance. Broke the downtrend, broke the uptrend. I suppose we could move up from here. Especially with the baseline below us. I don't think it makes sense to to be bearish here on privacy per. I just I don't really want to do anything with this. It's just it's not very interesting looking in either direction. Exchange perp, not really doing much at resistance. Ship perp, not doing much at resistance. Same for mid perp. All perp is a little bit stronger looking here. This is the same kind of continuation long structure that we're, we, we got on Ethereum that sort of, I think, could lead towards a movement to... 59.40 here, this area of uh, liquidity. That would get us this final retest that we had been looking for and never really got retest of this resistance. Okay, so we come down, then we come up retest resistance, then crumple. Maybe, maybe something more like that. Okay, so crypto up today, dollar down. Dollar kind of sideways today. It was really down yesterday. And we're getting a, a rather strong looking bearish divergence here. Higher high right here, lower high on our oscillator. It's kind of a sign, I think, that we could see uh, even more of a pullback on uh, on the Dixie. This is good. This is what we need for the market to be able to continue to hold up in the spot. Okay, so Dixie down slash sideways. Uh, let's let's look at higher time frame here on the Dixie. Oh yeah, look at the look at this weekly right here. I think we could pull back here and retest this previous resistance and support. I think that makes a lot of sense right here. Push, can't really make any headway. Reversal this week. Yeah, okay, all right. So this is where we're at at the dollar. Like very strong, but it does not have to go straight up necessarily. We can consolidate in this range a little bit more before we move up. But as long as the dollar is broken out here, we're in danger of revisiting uh, 100 units eventually. So what's that gonna look like? Sideways, we come down. Sign of strength right here, boom. Something like that maybe? Let's see what happens. Let's see what happens. Dow is down. Markets are kind of up. Ooh. This is strong today. So today we gap up on open. Trade down just a little bit, and then it's buying all day long, up into resistance. This is a relatively strong continuation long signal we have here. It's really only the downtrend and uh, resistance overhead that has us as concerned as we are here about the price action. 
the weekly look like. Maybe we should look for more sideways here on the Dow Jones. What if, what if, you know, you guys know I've been bearish since like fucking April and May on traditional markets. And this has been a long, very long sideways consolidation period on the Dow Jones that is likely a distribution area, but we still just aren't 100% sure. So I want to entertain the idea that I'm, I'm wrong here. I, you know, certainly it happens sometimes at least. You know, I don't, I don't want to miss the opportunity to get a good long just because I'm too bearish. I, I, I still think that as long as we're holding this downtrend, it doesn't make sense to look for longs yet. We're still holding below the 350 uh, resistance level that we've been eyeing here on the on, on the uh, Dow. I mean, the three-day chart is kind of strong looking. I mean, this three-day candle closed in two hours, right? You push down, push on the three-day candle, push, push, push. Bounce up, push down, bounce back up. And there's a lot of buyers in this spot. So what if we can get... break of this trend, a retest of the highs, and then maybe the markets hold on until late December, early January. What if we can get three, two more two to three more months of bull market? And then and then it kind of rhymes with the collapse that we had at the end of 2017. It's another four years, another, you know, Another crypto winter, you know, people are bullish in the spring because they don't know the bear market has started and we just move down and down and down. Traditional markets collapse with it. NASDAQ is kind of strong here today, too, on our three day. Now, on the one hand, we had been looking for this move up to retest resistance in this spot. We've been looking for it for um, a couple weeks now, but now that we're here, it makes me, it feels more bullish than I was expecting it to feel. I mean, we do have a break of the downtrend here. Crawling above the daily baseline, crossing up on our oscillator. WADA doesn't, does not dislike it. Needs more momentum, but it's green. I'm willing to loan the NASDAQ again if we can get above above 370. Make sure it's pointed. To, all right, all right, all right. Good. Same for the S and P. There's a break of this downtrend right here. Kind of a long signal, continuation, long signal here, what have you, on the S and P. Maybe we can at least retest the highs. We retest the highs. That's the rest of October to November of bullishness if we do that. So the dollar's falling. Looks like on higher time frames too, it's falling. Like let's 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 go back here to uh, got a three-day pullback on the dollar. 
Looks pretty weak on the three day. Weekly looks like a pullback. We're not there yet on the oscillator. Monthly, what does that look like? I guess monthly doesn't look too bad. not convinced on gold here this is just more sideways silver well as long as we close back above this support level then I'm long it so let's let's consider this I would, I would take this continuation long signal here. I like that we're back above $23. I'd be willing to take this maybe back towards the highs. At least towards 25 Palladium moving up off the lows. This is something we were kind of expecting here. And I'm also finding some strength. We should have just been a buyer in this area and never gotten scared out of our position right here. Copper. Aha! What can I say, guys? We, we, we were briefly fooled into thinking that this was a shorting opportunity. But once we made these higher lows... It was clear that this was likely to break upwards and retest the previous highs. And that's why we were looking for this breakout that we ultimately got with the follow through on copper. Brent crude, still more upside. And we're going to look for it as long as we hold this trend. Corn, we were fooled on this one. We should have waited for the break of the uptrend. So this one, I would just say we were stopped out. We just got that one wrong. This looked like it was gonna break out and then we got, we got faded. Natural gas, retest of resistance, stronger pullback. Probably we're gonna, we're gonna drop here. This looks like a pretty strong peg of this resistance level that we've been eyeing. Interesting spot on soybeans. I might be willing to long here. Maybe we should just keep waiting for the break of the downtrend to long it, though. Whenever we get it, what will long that opportunity but for right now just we're still holding the downtrend so we're gonna keep looking for that really looks like a shorting opportunity now we're just starting to break the uptrend we hang out resistance don't want it what are world markets doing? Okay. Hmm. Well, with the break of the downtrend, like so, we're just starting to peak up here. Maybe we could pop all the way back up towards our entry, even in this spot we could pop back up here trade sideways a little bit to me this looks like you know we just we need to spend more time chopping this tree down but, but we've we've broken the uptrend very strongly mm. maybe i'm too bearish maybe what we got is a retest of the previous high we retest it cool 
and we just, boom, we blast off into new heights. Maybe I'm just too bearish. I don't know. I mean, we do have our weekly moving average, like uh, overhead, right? It was support, support, support. It's holding us, it's holding us up. Boom, we crash below it. Now this is our resistance overhead. We got to get above it. We got all these trapped buyers. Not sure. I would consider taking profits on my short at least. France, well, we're basically back at entry for our short. We've broken the downtrend. At this time, we'll definitely have to just uh, call it quits on this. Wow, maybe this is actually incredibly strong. That's not happening. Huh. Well, as long as we've got a break of the downtrend, we're above the daily baseline, Wada Tar likes it. We need to at least aim for the for retest of the highs here. China continues moving up off of uh, off of this area of support that we've been eyeing. We kind of nailed this one. Everybody and their mom was so scared about China dropping, but the China A50 actually moved up from that area. France, again, oddly strong in this spot. Singapore showing strength back near support. Interesting. For a while, this chart looked so bad. And then we, uh, and then it looks like we, we might even fade, fade, what is that, six months of sideways. Huh. Hong Kong is at resistance. UK? Wow. I might have to take it on the chin with this one, guys. This looks rather bullish. We've broken above the resistance level that we've been eyeing. We closed it. We're getting follow through. Gonna have to take an L on this one. Boom. 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 This is bullish. This is bullish. Let's look at the monthly here. Good follow through. Looks like this may even fade our time transformation monthly uh, exit signal here. Well, well, well. Okay, well, I'm not willing to long yet, but we're pushed out of those shorts, definitely. Underwater here, underwater there. So we took an L on this one. India too. Wow, India is breaking upwards. Okay, so many of the world's markets are recovering strongly here. Maybe, maybe I am just too bearish, guys. It happens. You guys know famously I'm a bear. I call tops pretty well, but the depth of them, I'm not so great at. Maybe, maybe I'm just wrong here. We find some support back at this previous area of resistance. Back above uh, horizontal support. Netherlands back near our entry. Showing some strength. Yeah, 
kind of hanging out inside of uh, all the trapped buyers, but... Wow. It's a strong weekly candle. If we close this candle like this, we could expect some follow-through. Not willing to call it quits on this Netherlands short yet. All right, yo, you know we are at the top of the hour. If you want, we can get into requests. I haven't been here for three days. Ah, that's right. All right, no, by all means, continue, continue. Thank you. Um, yeah, so... We're seeing some interesting, uh, some interesting buying here. Full buyback. Still holding the downtrend. Considering the rest of the markets, maybe it makes sense to be taking profit in here. Just like take some profit, set the stop near break even, and just kind of wait to see what happens. I still feel like this is just such an ugly chart on higher time frames. It doesn't make sense necessarily to be dumping all our shorts yet too soon. Seeing some buyback in bonds here. Two-year bonds move down into our target area. So I think this is uh, an area to be a buyer. Man, it took months to see that play out. If you recall, we had previously been expecting a move down from resistance here. The Nasdaq again, so showing some surprising bullishness, but does not yet have a break of the downtrend. Russell 2000, I think, is showing some interesting bullishness today. Let's delete this so you can actually look at this. We push down, push, 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 push. Gets all bought up. We make a higher low here and get a bullish movement today. This is a longing opportunity on the Russell 2000. 30 year bonds at resistance for breaking the downtrend. West 30. This we're dumping because we do have a, um, it's, you wouldn't really call this a uh, head and shoulders because the shoulder is so much lower, but this is definitely some bottomy behavior. We're back above the daily baseline. Just dump this one to break even. Maybe I'm just wrong about how bearish we need to be on the markets, guys. I can't tell right now. It's uh, I'm not I'm not willing to I'm not willing to just give up the ghost and long everything right now. But yeah, things don't look as bad as they did last week. All right, so um, I'm willing to look at uh, chart request now. All right, let's get into those guys. Uh, a couple comments here. Adam writes, hey, that plug long worked out great, boys. 25% move so far. All right, we did talk about plug earlier, I think, last, even last week. Uh, it worked out great, though. Shoutouts to Adam. on uh, Bplow writes, yeah, I never like dumping my shorts. Uh, oh, I never like dumping in my shorts. <laughs> okay, or do you do you still mean that you don't like uh, flipping 
getting out of your shorts. You don't like getting flipped out. I guess nobody does. But uh, let's let's go ahead and get to the first request of the day. We have the following from B Flow. B Flow writes: Can we take a look at S Fund USDT continuation long to new all-time highs, or is it overextended? He asks. Okay, that's S Fund. S F U N D. I mean, I, I kind of can't tell if it's overextended or not. I, I just wouldn't do anything with it here. Um, I think if you could make a new close above 475, then uh, it might make sense to enter. But, I mean, you know, the place to enter long, it's like either down here or when we make a new high, like not this spot. So while we're at resistance, we're not looking to enter here. And then we'll see if, if it, you know, if we make a new high, then we're probably not overextended and you can enter. And if we don't, then we probably were and you just stay out. What's next? Interesting pattern on time transformation there. Mm -hmm. All right. Big shout outs to B-Flow. That is your look at uh, S-Fund. Yes, S-Fund on KuCoin. And there you have it. Getting into the next one. What do we have here? Wayne and Wayne on YouTube. Can you take a look at Bat? All right, the Bat first. Let's do it. Um, trading sideways, no continuation long signal, nothing we want to do with it. What's next? Monero USD. Also trading sideways, below resistance. Um, this is, it, it doesn't have a continuation long signal. I don't really want it. So see resistance here, resistance here, resistance here. Yeah, not super interested in it. What's next? All right, quick and to the point. There was your look at Monero and basic attention token. Big shout outs to Wayne in the YouTube chat. Here is the following for Adam. Adam writes, can you guys take a look at step, step perp? I'm in a long on it. I hope this is one of those uh, coin situations of a small cap having a bottom accumulation phase that ends up in the violent upside. Okay. Well, I mean, it looks like that already happened. Uh, so we accumulated near 15 cents, right? And now it's a dollar. It's like up about 10x from the lows. Um... I don't really want to be a buyer in this area. We're right near resistance. I would look to try and buy on some sort of pullback. See if we can maybe retest this area one more time. And then if we made a new high above 135, then I'd be willing to be a buyer. But I, I just don't like buying this area right here because there's too much of a chance we can just you know, come all the way back down, even come back down and retest this area. What would you do? You just got to hold on screaming at that point. So, uh, yeah. Or, you know, where would your stop be if you bought right here? Like down here? It's like a 50% stop. Doesn't make any sense. So it's just not a good spot to be a buyer. I'd wait to see. What's next? All right, there you have it, guys. A look at Step Finance. Big shout outs to Adam in the live chat. Getting into the next request now. We're moving along briskly today. Blockchain gains rights XYO USD weekly. Please. All right. XYO on the weekly. Also, D Live in. So I'm going to go stock that chest. We're going to prepare to open the D Live chest in about five minutes. See if there's anywhere we can get there. Yeah. There we go. All right, so this is actually going to be a chart X one. Let's open this up.
Wait, no, we had more data than this before, didn't we? This goes back to July of 2020. Hmm. Okay, no, 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 this is our data. This is our data. Yeah, on the weekly, I, d I don't see much here that looks special. On the three-day, it looks kind of like we've rejected from resistance again. Three-day looks kind of weak here, too. You see this resistance level. Kind of pierce into it and get rejected instantly. And uh, yeah, this is a daily short continuation signal, continuation short. So I just, I don't really see much that you would, uh, you would really want to do in this spot. I would probably, um, I mean, if you're, if you're in this one from the lows, then maybe consider holding on to it long term. But if you bought here and you're looking to take profit near the highs, like I would probably you know, be taking profits in this area. Look for some sort of retest of four or five, whatever it's of a cent. What's next? All right, big shout outs to Blockchain Gains. There's your look at XYO. We're going to get it to another request. Uh, heads up, we're going to open that D Live chest in about two minutes, too. So. Prepare, prepare. Uh, Jag077 on DLive, could you please take a look at Quant? You know, it's not quite there yet, but if you think about it, this is a similar setup to what we were looking at earlier with, what was it? With copper. This is a similar setup to copper, right? Let's go ahead and look at copper. So coppers was a higher time frame. But we, we formed this support level, and it's a descending triangle. Now, a descending triangle usually breaks downwards. It didn't in this case. In this case, support held, and buyers took it back towards resistance. Maybe that's what we can look to see over here on Quant. At the very least, I think this is a, a relatively good uh, low risk entry point. If you close back below $260, you'd probably want to be out. You can hold on, you could buy here. Even if we move down a little bit, you could hold, but then below $260, you'd be like, eh, I was wrong. Looks like we're going to break down. So, I mean, it's a reversal play. My system wouldn't give you a long on it, but it, it could make sense if you if you took it, at least take it back towards a retest of the highs, right? That's what that's what we got on uh, on copper. Okay, what's next? All right, DLiveians, we are going to introduce the next request, and then I'm going to hit the distribute button. So, got about 30 seconds heads up. Probably by the time you hear this message, you're going to see the prompt. To redeem your lemons. Let's introduce the next request and click that button. We got Polkadot here for ACU5. I'm in the heavy log on Polkadot. Would you mind checking that out and giving me your opinion? We certainly can. Log on Polkadot and clicking the distribute button.
Oh. At this point, I don't really want Polka Dot unless we make new highs. I mean, what's the point of buying at forty dollars or below forty dollars even? Uh, when this is really a take profit area. Forty dollars was an area we were looking to take profits in before, and we did. And price collapsed, and sure, it made like a new high, but it hasn't made like a new all-time high at this point. Until we're above forty-five dollars, I'm not a buyer. I'm I'm really a seller in this area. And then if we're above forty-five, okay, fine. You know, that can be that can be bullish, but there's no sense in in, in buying now. What's next? All right, well, there is your look at Dot. Shout out to ACU5 for that one. Uh, all right, back to the lemon giveaway. Big shout outs to today's winners. Give me just a second to put it on screen. We have Franklin MC taking the top spot, 48 lemons. Somehow I came in second. Simpson YT, anywhere in Jag 077, taking the 345 spot. All right, thank you, everybody. Uh, kicking in on DLive. And there are your lemons for today, guys. Let's go ahead and begin winding the show now. We've got about 15 minutes left. I'm sure we could probably knock out the remaining requests. Let's start with this one here from uh, Ebeniz, Ebeniz76. Can we take a look at Audio Perp? Yeah, let's give Audio Perp a look. Uh, I guess this one is kind of similar to uh, Quant in a way. What we've got is this, uh, I would classify this as a descending triangle. Yeah, there you go. It looks more like a descending triangle on the three day. Well, it's a descending triangle in the higher time frame. Uh, this one, I I don't really I don't really like this as a reversal play. I, I'm I'm not seeing a strong reaction off of this bottom. We could just I mean, keep in mind you can fall out of the bottom of a descending triangle. In fact, that's what usually happens. So I, I don't really want to take this for a continuation long signal. Um, if we got a break of the downtrend, then then all right, that would make sense. Until then, I would just I would just kind of wait to see what happens. What's next? All right, there is your look at audio perp. Let's continue. We got another request waiting to go here. We got a three pack. We'll see if we can get them done. Boris Bitcoin, happy Thursday, all. May I request a look at the following? If it isn't too much, please do what you can. Wants to look at MTA Maker in one inch. Uh, unfortunately, I don't think there's much we can do with meta right now. It's just kind of trading sideways at support. I, I do like the higher time frames. When you look at this on log mode, it kind of looks like we're just accumulating here. If you look at this at linear, it kind of looks like we're just accumulating here at the lows. I bet you could take this back to a dollar easily. Look, look at the look at the look at the volume up here. It's like two very strong points of control. One here, one here. I think there's probably a long trade in this spot. Uh, this is this is this is good in a sense that if you if you broke below 53 cents you, you get out of your long right say okay well I, I'm I'm long here I'm looking for just a retest of a dollar which would be like a 40 or 50 percent move and then if if we were if we fall below 53 cents 50 cents then I was wrong it, it, were, it, were, it wasn't a reversal and I take my L, and that could make sense. There's a there's a good setup there. It would look something like this.
Right? Yeah. Makes sense. Something like that. And then the three day seems to seems to kind of like this trade. Okay. Uh, so it was Meta and Maker. Correct, Maker number two. Uh, Maker is an interesting continuation long signal. We are hanging out near support. We're hanging out underneath resistance. I guess with the break of the downtrend, it could make sense to take this continuation long signal. I bet you can at least hit a take profit one out of it. You know, maybe, maybe take it towards 280 something here. So we got resistance right here, support. Resistance, support, support. Right, so we push up towards this area. And then I I can't help but still feel bearish on the markets, guys. But uh, yeah, there's probably along here. What's next? All right. <clears throat> Excuse me. Big shout out to Boris and Bitcoin for a look at MetaMaker. And well, you know what? We are running low on time. Maybe if we have time, we'll round out and check one inch for you later. But let's knock out a few more other people's requests. Profit Bear, can we look at Groot? Look and accumulate a bit more before we go to all time highs. All right. So, how would you approach GRT? Where would you accumulate for another run at all time highs? I think it makes sense to be a buyer back towards 50 cents, 50 cents, 55 cents. I'm going to look at this volume down here. I will borrow this box because it does not seem to want to make it. Damn it, stop it. So, this volume right here. We did not quite retest. We like threatened to, and then we didn't. Excuse me. So we'll most likely come up, retest this area, reject down here, and then that's when you're a buyer here. We could move up from here. As a matter of fact, this is a continuation uh, long signal, but I, I don't, you'll be able to hit take profit one, maybe even take profit two, but I think we're going to end up down in this area. So if you want to take some scalp longs, by all means, I, I do see a break of the uh, in the downtrend here on uh, GRT. So a break of the downtrend, we move up, then we kind of retest the baseline, baseline, baseline bounce, continuation long up into this area. And then we slam down into the actual buy zone where you accumulate your long-term position. What's next? Next up, <clears throat> Mana, Decentraland. Yes. That is not Mana. Yes, Mana for Crypto Cats and the D Life Chat. Going for it. Nah. I mean, I'd argue this looks worse than a lot of other charts we've looked at. Alright, so this... This does not yet have a continuation long signal. Yeah, I mean, you're, uh, the lines usually aren't wrong. Not when you draw them, at least. Well, thank you. I see this area as an area of support and resistance. So support, boom, boom, support, support. We got resistance here, resistance, resistance, support, support, resistance again. So maybe if we can conquer 90 cents, then I could see us going at least back towards 110, maybe even retest the highs around 150. But I, there's, there's no reason to take it right now. We don't even have a continuation long signal, and we've seen stronger alts 
so why bother indeed what's that there you have it well reminds me i gotta buy a piece of uh, the central land myself um look for an opportunity hopefully at the next uh, big correction. Let's see here. Chico Blank Overano on YouTube. <clears throat> Axie and H bar, please and thank you. All right, AXS. Just a few minutes left in the show. Almost got all the requests knocked out. It could be a continuation long signal today. I would probably be willing to take it as long as we close above 140 bucks. No complaints. What's next? All right, moving along swiftly. That was a look at Axie. H bar is next. I, uh, yeah, I'm just not sold. We're we're actually below resistance. So if you think about this as previous previous resistance, this area is like push, push, push push and fall down because we couldn't get above resistance fake out still below resistance still below resistance essentially until we close above 40 cents i don't want it once we start closing above 40 cents on the three day and the weekly then i'm interested in it so here we are still below resistance on the weekly Yep, I um, I'm just not interested in it yet. We need we need more. What's next? All right, what do we have remaining on the board? Bitcoin currently dipping. We are below 57 again. Let's take a look. One of the last requests on the day, guys. We have the following: ALCX for Chico and PDD 63, both requesting ALCX. I believe that's Alchemix. Let's pull that up here on uh, on Charnix. Um, it's beautiful, but you should have been a buyer like two or three days ago. I would just hold on for a continuation at, or try and buy on some sort of pullback towards $300. Uh, this is going to have legs, I think. What's next? All right, PDD 63, Chico, there is your look at ALCX. Um, what do we have remaining? Just a few requests coming in very late across the line. Let's see how many of these we can entertain. At the very least, I will name the three, and Alex, you tell me if any of them interest you. Rhino TD, hello, and requesting XRP, please. All right, XRP request. We have a PP Dex request for Chico Blanco Rhino. He says it looks so good right here, okay. And finally, the last request of the day comes from Murdoch the Murloc on Twitch. Hello, guys. Can we take a look at Cake and H-Bar? I believe we just looked at H-Bar, so really his request would be Cake. X or P, Cake or PP Dex? Yes. PP Dex. All right. All right, so I've mentioned PP Dex numerous times. You have, indeed. Somewhat it of a legend. It does look good here. This is the weekly. I don't know. Looks pretty strong to me. Small candle, medium candle, big candle. Usually that means follow through. Uh, Market cap is currently $480,000. Right, so it's PPDX and cake. Indeed. <clears throat> Quite the. Uh... Quite the title on this one, PP Dex, huh? I'll have to yeah. give this a further look. Oh, it's looking pretty good, too. Uh, well, we do have a break of the downtrend here on Cake, right? With the break of the downtrend and something approximating a continuation long signal. I would probably be looking to take this back up towards twenty four dollars, twenty five, twenty six. And then I I still think I want to see a stronger pullback here towards thirteen bucks. You know, just the previous consolidation area.
Make sure you uh, draw that on. I, I drew it. Oh, I was gonna say the squiggly. I, I foresee the, the squiggly um, uh, no, price. No, no, I, uh, I, I suppose the box will. We'll suffice with a little comment. Nice. I mean, the squigglies are just for fun. The squigglies are, you know, that's not TA. I'm aware, but uh, some I, I love returning to them uh, weeks later and seeing uh, how the pattern plays out. But enough, enough of the um, uh, of that because we are at uh, 90 minutes into the show, so it's about time to wrap it up. Uh, big shoutouts to Chico at some of our last requests. Yes, Chico. Uh, Murdoch and of course uh, Rhino TD. There are your outgoing requests. Shout out to everybody in the live chat. It's about time to wind it down. Uh, Glast, I see a new user here. Glass, I'm not sure if I recognize this user, but big shout out to Glass if you are new here. Uh, please do follow, subscribe. We come to you live every day, Monday through Friday, same hours, 90 minutes, chalk filled technical analysis and more glad to have you here Polly B is with us as well nice to see you on the way out Murdoch says thank you Alex and Jack have a good night well a very good night to you Murdoch hit me up tomorrow and uh, I will get you we'll get you your Mina request but today we are pretty much out of time it was a pleasure of course guys charting or at least assisting and you know I got Alex's back in the midst of the charting great work as always let me go to the outro right here all right once again, guys, you know what to do. Check out that premium.kikencryptocurrency.com, where we, of course, have all our educational offerings. Highly encourage you to give that a peep. Uh, what else do we have? Yes, we also have Discord, because somebody asked earlier, how do I get on the Discord, JAG077? Do check out discord.kikencryptocurrency.com. You get your own Discord invite link. JAG, look forward to seeing you in the general chat. Uh, we'll hit you up, get you in touch with Mr. Efer, get you that prize. What else do we have? And finally, we have... Uh, performance. No, it's results. Results.crackingcryptocurrency.com. Uh, finally, finally, we are getting caught up, guys. Um, things are looking good on the back end, and we are pleased to say we've caught up, and all of our uh, much long overdue results from the last few months of our analysts' great, great performance has now been published. Do check them out at results.crackingcryptocurrency.com. You'll find that you know no one is more transparent and also more accountable. No one keeps, I think, better records in this trading game than we do. And you can, of course, check that out. All our trading history and performance at that link below. Thank you, to everybody. And we're going to punch out for now. See you tomorrow for the Friday update. Final words to Alex. Uh, trade safely, guys. There are some really great looking alt trades out there. Uh, just make sure that you, you're getting you're getting confirmations before you take them because uh, I mean some of them aren't great. For instance, I'm still stuck in the singularity Dow trade that I took over here. It's like 30% underwater. It kind of sucks, but we're still hanging over my support level. Anyway, look, it turns out there are better trades I could have taken for this one, and there's and there's better trades that you guys can probably take too, depending on which alts you were looking at. Don't be afraid to be like, oh, okay, well, you know, the alt uh, that I was looking at, it's just, it's not performing, um, and there, there's other baskets that, that are. I don't know. I, I don't want to necessarily encourage you to dump positions and take up new ones, but uh, also, I mean, don't be afraid to buy into strength. That's yes, all. Yes, of course. This isn't trading advice, guys. This is a mere um, hypothecation. No, that's not it either. It's just... Uh, it's uh, it's um, speculative. Uh, I don't know. It's just not trading advice, of course. So everybody have themselves a great day. Trade safely out there. Much love to you all. See you tomorrow. The Friday update comes your way. 24 hours. Peace. <laughs>
Thank you.